the facilities manager of home insurance company's new office wing finds that the air conditioning unit is not functioning. The compressor and the fan are out because the system was improperly wired. After some discussion, the general contractor has agreed to replace the whole system. The manager wants to know how quickly the job can be done. He has collected data as given in the table. Now the manager intends to spend as much as $400 to expedite the project if it is economical to do so. Find out the minimum project time within the allowable budget. So here the manager has listed each of the activities and the predecessors. Now he has also collected a quote which gives the normal expected time to complete each of the activities. He also has the minimum possible time taken by each of the activities after crashing and the cost to expedite or the cost to crash each of the activities in dollars per day. So for the first activity per day crashing of this activity will cost $50. For the second activity per day it will cost $100 to crash this activity and so on. Now the manager wants to bring down the normal time to find out the fastest possible time in which the project can be completed. But of course if he has to reduce the time taken by the entire project he has to pay extra for expediting the activities as we have seen in the cost to expedite. Now overall he wants to spend a maximum of $400 and wants to get the maximum gain in terms of the time reduced after crashing. So we need to find out which activities can be crashed and how much can it be crashed within an expense of $400 and what will be the new expedited project time. So to do that we have to identify the activities that can be crashed and to find out the activities which can be crashed we have to first find out the critical path and to first find out the critical path we have to draw a network diagram. So with this information let's first draw the network diagram and then find out the critical path. So first we'll draw the activity A because it doesn't have any predecessors. Next B, C and D are all dependent on the completion of activity A. So let's draw these three activities. So this is B, C, D this is A. Let's draw the ending nodes. 3, 4, 5. Now E is dependent on B, F is dependent on C and G is dependent on D. So let's draw these. Let's say this is E, this is F and this is G. Now next H is dependent on F and G. So H is dependent on F and G. So G has to merge into F. So let's modify this. So here we'll draw G and then we'll draw the ending node. Let's say this is 6 and from this we can then start activity H. Now next I is dependent on E and H. So E and H have to merge so that I can start from that. So let me modify E so that it can merge with H. So now I'll draw E. 
So this is E and this is the ending node number 7 and then from here I can start I and draw the ending node which is number 8. So this is our network diagram for the project. Now let me put the expected time for each of the activities. So A is 3, B is 4, C is 6, D is 4, E is 5, F is 3, G is 7, H is 3 and I is 2. Now the next step is to identify the critical path. So let's identify all the possible paths and the duration for each of the paths and whichever path takes the longest amount of time will be the critical path. So the first possible path is A, B, E, I. So A, B, E, I. The next one is A, C, F, H, I. The next one is A, D, G, H, I. Now I think a little bit has been messed up by me where I have used small and capitals. So let me modify this. So this is the fine E F G H and I. So sorry about that. So these are the three paths that we have identified A B E I A C F H I and A D G H I. Now let's identify the duration for each of the paths. So A, B, E, I, 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 5 is 12, plus 2 is 14. A, C, F, H, I, so 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15, and plus 2 is 17. A D G H I so 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 3 is 17 plus 2 is 19 so out of these three parts A D G H I seems to be the longest so this is our critical path And the current duration of the project with the normal estimated time is 19 days. So now let's identify which of these activities can be crashed such that the overall expense is not more than $400. Now the activities which can be crashed are A or D or G or H or I. So let's see. A, D, G, H or I. Now out of these five activities, three activities are not possible to be crashed. So we are left with only two which is A or G. Now A is definitely cheaper than G and we can crash this activity by one day. So let's crash A by one day. So first crashing is crash A by one day. So the crash cost is equal to $50. And project duration now becomes 
19 minus 1, which is 18 days. Now, since we crashed activity A, the duration of this path becomes 18 days. Now, A is also on this path. So, this will also reduce by one day and the duration becomes 16 days. And this path also has A. So, this will also reduce by one day and the duration becomes 13 days. So, this has been reduced to two days. Now, still we have the same path as our critical path, which is A, D, G, H, I. And we earlier had two activities which we could crash, which is A and G. But now we can not crash A because it has already reached its maximum possible crashing. So the next activity which can be crashed is G and the cost is $120. Now the possibility of crashing is four days. However, if we crash by more than two days, the other path, which is ACFHI, also becomes critical. So here, let's crash activity G by two days, and then we'll reevaluate with the two paths being on the critical path. So our second is crash G by two days. So per day cost of crashing is $120. So if we crash it for two days, the cost will be 120 multiplied by two, which is $240. So crash cost is equal to $240. And now the project duration will be equal to 16 days. So this becomes 16 days. Now this part doesn't have G on it. So this path remains the same as well as this path because it doesn't have G on it. So till now our expenses have been 240 plus 50, which is $290. And our maximum is $400. So we still have $110 remaining. So now if we have to crash it further, we have two critical paths, ACFHI and ADGHI. Now G we have already crashed by two days, so this becomes five. So let's identify the activities which can be crashed between these two paths because we can't just crash one path while the other path still at 16 days. We have to crash both the paths. So A is common. So A can be crashed. Now, if we decide to crash C from this path, A, C, F, H, I, then we have two options. We can crash D from the other path or G from the other path. So let's put these combinations. So C and D. And the other option is C and G. And if we decide to crash F from this path ACFHI, then we can either crash D or G with it. So F D and F G. Now H is common, so we can crash H all alone, or I is also common, so we can also crash I all alone. Now let's find out what is the crash cost in dollars per day for these combinations. So A cannot be crashed any further because we have already reached the maximum. So this is not possible. C and D. C is $200 and D cannot be crashed. So this combination is also not possible. C and G. So the crashing cost of C is $200 per day and G. So G is $120 per day. So 200 plus 120 is 320. So this is 320. 
per day. Now F and D, so F is 80 and D cannot be crashed. So this combination is not possible. F and G, so F is 80 and G is 120. So 80 plus 120 is 200. Now H cannot be crashed. So this is not possible. And I also cannot be crashed. So this is also not possible. So now with these combinations, we can crash F and G simultaneously, but the cost is $200 and we have already incurred a cost of $290 and the remaining is equal to 400 minus 290 which is equal to $110. So if we crash this project further, we'll exceed the budget. So we can't do that. So we can't crash this project any further. So now the cost is $290 and the duration is 16 days. So this is the maximum that can be expedited on this project based on the budget constraint that the manager has.